back in 2011, the Mark Anderson made this statement. I think now it's very familiar to you because this, is, this statement is repeatedly you heard during this uh, conference, the software is eating the world. Right? That's what we ju just discussed. In addition to that, he also mentioned uh, every company will become a software company. It does not matter you are in retail, you are in mining, you are in apparel. Now everyone has to become a software company. If you were there in the last evening, you witnessed that how mass, the mass uh, evolved or they are uh, evolved into the digital transformation, how they embrace digital transformation, uh, they call that the mass as a service. So this is a kind of a, a global phenomenon. You cannot really escape, right? Either your business has to evolve or your business will die, right? So then, how do you embrace digital transformation, right? Let's say you have a, a chain of a restaurant or you may have a chain of a retail shops, right? So if you build a website so that people can order your stuff and you deliver to their doors, is the digital transformation? Or is it good enough? The my answer is no. So let me elaborate. So I will take two aspects and discuss with you. The first aspect is digital delivery channel. And here are my observations. So in our days, how do we buy something? Earlier, as a as an enterprise or as a company, you had to pay for paper advertisement. You had to pay for TV commercials. And you, you need some back from celebrities. That's how you sell, right? But nowadays, is it the same or something change? So when you, are, when you want to buy something online, we are not depending on TV advertisement or celebrities, right? We are, we are purely depend on real user experience. We read comments from other people. Uh, we uh, the, we look for the rating from other people, and based on that, uh, we purchase, right? So, so this is a really important thing. So if you embrace digital transformation, and if you want to have digital delivery channel, you have to think about that aspect. How I capture, how I facilitate my consumers to uh, provide their experience, how they provide their rating, right? The second observation is, earlier, if you are a, a reputed or well-known brand name, it is mandatory to have a luxury outlet in some cities or in some expensive streets. But nowadays, that's, a, that's no longer a required thing. Who cares about the Amazon physical stores? Or who cares about the office of Uber? As far as they reach to us, we are online, that's good enough. Right? So this is the second observation. The third ex explanation is, uh, uh, nowadays, your consumers expect, expect fast response time and convenient mean, means of connectivity. What that does mean? In earlier, right, uh, if, if somebody wants to contact your business, they have to uh, contact you through a phone line in between 9 to 5 or 8 to 5 or so on. But, now, but how do you do today? Most of the cable, if there is a complaint, people go to a particular Facebook page and make a comment. Or they go to the WhatsApp, they go to Twitter. So once you have a digital delivery channel, you have to think how you present in social networks and how you communicate via social networks. So, so these are some of the things you have to think when you design digital delivery channel. My second aspect is, Personalized user experience. What does that mean? Probably some of you have a favorite restaurant. So what's the, especially with your favorite restaurant? Most probably, they are providing you a personalized experience. They know you are, one, one, when you enter the, the restaurant, they know your favorite plate. They know how much you consume sugar, how much you consume salt, and so on. Basically, they manage to provide you a personalized experience. Right? So even in online, your consumers expect that kind of a personalized experience. 
For as an example, I used to buy uh, a lot of books, right? So I specifically say I am not reading a lot of books, but I used to buy a lot of books. So when I go to Google, uh, when I go to Amazon, I always easily can find my favorite authors, my favorite subject. That means Amazon know who is my favorite author. They know who, what are the, my favorite subjects, but they never ask from me. So based on my search history, based on my previous purchases, they know who is my favorite author, who is my favorite subject, etc. Based on this information, they can provide me a, a personalized service or personalized content. So you need to find a way to provide such an experience, even in a digital channel. So these are the two main aspects. So what is common in these two aspects, or these two examples? The first one is digitalized delivery channel. Second one is personalized experience. So what is the key here? Or what is the important thing? The important, or the common point between these two cases is you should know your customer. So without knowing your customer, you cannot design a proper delivery channel, and also you, you never can provide the personalized experience. The better you know the, your customer, you can design and provide a better service. That's effectively give you a chance to build a better relationship. End of the day, you will have a very successful business. So, so how do you know your customer? So there, this is the technical answer. The CIAM, or Consumer Identity and Access Manage, is a specialized branch of identity and access management, which is specially designed to cater this kind of consumer-related uh, identity problems. Right? So basically, CIAM provide, or, uh, or CIAM help you to identify your concern. It's, it help you to identify your consumers and allow to connect with them. That's the first thing. And the second thing, CIAM help you to learn about your concern. So basically, to, if you find a better CIAM solution, you can learn about your consumers. What are their interests? What are their attitudes? What are their behaviors? So you can use them to personalize your offerings. So in, uh, these are the three basic areas. If you look at any good CIM solution, uh, for example, WS Riding Server is a, a well-known CIM solution. Uh, so you can find these things. The first, uh, it should facilitate to connect with consumers. In earlier days, how do you connect with consumers in digital? Basically, you put up a web page so people can register. They can provide your use. This is my name, this is my phone number, and so on. But in nowadays, each and every one of us in this room, we have a digital identity, right? Probably you have a Facebook account, you have a Facebook ID, you have a Twitter ID. And everyone here, we have a mobile phones. That means we have another digital identity. So why should I ask just another pair of credentials? Instead of that, your consumers, they already have a digital identity. So CIM and tools should bridge the gap so that the CIM solutions should allow uh, existing digital identities to onboard, to onboard your business. For example, uh, for example, uh, if, if somebody is, let's say somebody is uh, having uh, Facebook identity, so instead of creating another account, they should be able to log in and uh, bring their Facebook profile into your business. So th these are some of the requirements. Basically, a, a good CIM solution facilitate to connect with consumers. Second one is personalized experience. I mentioned that. So the CIM and tools can provide you uh, info information, uh, basically the analytical information. What's their search patterns, what their uh, behaviors, attitude, and so on. So you can design a personalized experience. Third one is more important. Uh, the CIM solution should facilitate to uh, protect personal data. I will come to little later. So, so far, uh, the story is a very, really good story, right? So it, it, it looks like CIM is a silver bullet. So let me move into the other side of the story. 
privacy. So what you can think about privacy when I say? So let, 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 let me elaborate uh, about why privacy is so important, right? The first example, I think this is very recent incident. You know how much Facebook had to pay uh, in terms of financially and also in terms of uh, their brand name reputation. Just because they haven't paid enough attention to uh, the protection or privacy of their consumers, right? These are very big brand names. The same from Yahoo. In Yahoo case, it's financial, it's around 350 million, but the brand name damage is more than that. So whenever you go to digital transformation, you have to think about how you protect your privacy, uh, how you protect personal information, or how you ensure privacy of your consumers. This is really important. In fact, now it become a, a global movement. And all over the world, uh, there are emerging social movements demanding uh, personal data protection and better privacy, right? GDPR, the GDPR is a milestone of this because uh, for the first time in history, as far as I know, GDPR recognized uh, privacy as a fundamental human right, right? And uh, GDPR is mainly designed to uh, cater, it's applicable to Europe Union, but if, if anybody, if anybody offer a service to uh, Europe citizen, let's say you are uh, giving some, uh, you are uh, providing some online service, or you are uh, delivering some goods to Europe Union, then you have to be compliant. According to stats, uh, it seems like 190 countries affected with GDPR. So if you are not co compliant with the GDPR, you cannot keep track of uh, data from Europe Union citizens. So this is a very recent one, California Consumer Act, right? So soon or later, this will become a global uh, trend. So we can, in near future, we will see a, a global privacy regulations. So this, this become a fundamental human right. So you cannot have a digital business without thinking about the privacy. So that is the takeaway from this uh, uh, presentation. So these are some of the uh, individual rights, so I'm not going to discuss uh, detail. Instead of that, I'm going to discuss uh, four principles and how we support these four principles using CIM solution. Okay, so the first one is we have to put customer in control on their data. So if you collect personal information from customers or consumers, you need to provide them a channel so that they are in a control on their own data. Basically, they should be able to see what are the information kept in the system. And if they want, they should be able to change. If they want, they want, they should be able to erase the information. So you, as a business, you should provide them a medium. So how to do that? So this is a principle and also according to GDPR, this is a requirement. How do how you do that? If it is a good CIM solution, it out of the box provides a feature called self-service user portal. So this self-service user portal is kind of a web application. So your consumers can log into this application and they can review what are the information kept within the business and why they keep this information, right? And if they want, they can change. And if, if they want to restrict, they can do that. And if they want to remove this data, that's also facilitated through this self-care user portal, right? Uh, second one is uh, transparency, fairness, and lawfulness. Okay, some of the kind of uh, legal jargon, right? So uh, basically, you have to transparent to your consumers, and you have to be fair, and also you have to make sure your all data processing all of your data processing activities are lawful. So how to do that? Basically, you need to provide a, a, a well-designed privacy policy for your consumers so that they can review and understand, and they, you have to provide consent. For example, let's say, let's say you are running an uh, online, uh, uh, let's say you are running an online 
a restaurant or something like that. So where people can order their foods, right? In this case, if you want to collect and if you want to store a phone number from a user, then in first place, you have to ask them, I want your phone number in order to update you about your order. Is it okay with you? And when you want to collect their physical address, you have to clearly tell them, hey, I need your physical address in order to deliver your foods. Are you okay with that? So if the answer is yes, only then you can store those information. Not only that, you can store this personal information and also at the same time you have to keep a track of they have provided this consent, right? And this is not sufficient. In later time, you should facilitate them to come and review what are the already given consent. And if they won't, you should facilitate them to revoke them. So these are the uh, best practices and also this becoming a, a rules. So if you look at any uh, consent, uh, so the technical, this is known as consent lifecycle management. So if you look at any uh, uh, well-designed CIM solution, this solution facilitate, out of the box facilitate, this kind of a features, basically concerned lifecycle management. So if, if you look at WS Radian server, we out of the box support all these aspects. So next one is data minimization. So what does mean? For example, let's say, uh, if I take my previous example, if it is an online restaurant or something like that, there is no point for you to ask a birthday, right? Asking phone number and physically address makes sense because you need this thing in order to provide the service. But what about birthday? You don't need, right? So then you can't ask. So that's the principle. You have to minimize. You always have to collect a minimum required set of data. And also, uh, you have to think about uh, the data retention policy. How long you keep personal data. If it is very short time, that's better. Because as far as you keep this data, you have to provide the best security. So you have to protect them, and you are accountable on this personal data. So as soon as if you can remove this data, that's better. For this aspect, the CIM2 solution can play a bigger role. Why? So usually, if you look at any enterprise, you don't run a single system. You have multiple software systems, right? And usually, you have to connect your user information to all these things system. It can be your employee information or it can be your uh, consumers or customers information. In either case, you are replicating or replicating your personal information in several places. But in CIM solution, they provide out of the box uh, answer called security token. In, in, in summary, what it does is it keep all personal data within one system, usually within a CIM user store, and when other systems need this information, uh, the CIM solution provide on-demand token. So on-demand token means this consumer application don't persist. They, uh, they just use uh, this information and forget. Right? So, so this is the best practice when you come to uh, uh, data minimization. And also, this is really important, the multi-region deployment. Why? Because uh, the most of the countries now have a restriction. If you collect the citizen information from this country, you have to store them within the same country or same region. For example, areas like European Union, Australia, this can be the case in future, right? In such a scenario, uh, CIMS tools can support multi-region deployment. So we, the solution offer a global service, but data remain locally. So this is, this is another required functionality if you plan for future. So the last one is uh, the traditional uh, security uh, requirement like accuracy, integrity, right? So how do you do that? So, if, so first thing is uh, multi-factor authentications. So basically in security, there are, we, we, we talk about three factors. The first one is what, what, what do you know? It, it could be your password, passcode, or something like that. That is the first factor. Then there's a second factor called what do you have? So probably you may have a mobile phone, you, have, you may have hardware devices, 
so, something like that. That is the second factor. Third fact is what you are. Basically, it could be your uh, finger trip, uh, it could be your um, some eye-related uh, fingerprint, it could be your face recognition, something like that. These are the third factor. So if you combine, in order, when you authenticate a person, if you c use two of these factors, that is known as a strong authentication. So, right? so if you have a strong authentication, that will minimize possible attacks and possible vulnerability. So CIM tools can provide this kind of a features out of the box. Second one is analytic. For example, let's say uh, someone, uh, the imaginary person called Alex. So Alex log into your application from India, right? And he log out. After, let's say after 30 minutes, the same person, Alex, Alex log in back to, try to log in back to your system from Mexico, right? Within a 30 minutes window. In reality, nobody can travel from India to Mexico within 30 minutes in these days, right? So, so, so then your system, your system should identify. This is something not possible based on the, uh, the locations, based on the distance. We, technically, we call geo-velocity. Based on this technique, the system should detect this is, there is something wrong going with the system. Then it should fire some alert for the administrators and also the owner. In addition, it should take additional me measures, something like it's automatically blocked the user account. So these are the security measures. So if it is a good uh, CIM solution, it out of the provide this solution. So let me come to a conclusion. So we discuss two aspects. It looks like two contradictory aspects. First one is uh, digital transformation. It's happening around us, so you cannot escape from. So either you have to uh, evolve or you have to uh, die. So that's the real. Second one is, while you are embracing uh, digital transformation, you have to pay uh, up topmost attention on privacy. But the good news is, if you can find a, a good, a better CIM solution, that solution can be your companion. So that is my main message. Thank you.